you have to embrace pain like so 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 deeply the only thing i think is like left right left right when the legs are moving left right left right to be able to just push through that pain this is the best part in mountain bike just smashing yourself in the climb i think you have to be born maybe a bit different <laughs> I really want to feel the pain because the feeling you get afterwards when you get over your limit, the, yeah, you can't describe that. Never gets easier, you just go faster, I guess. We are back in Europe for the second round of the UCI Mercedes-Benz Cross Country World Cup. And it's a familiarity, isn't it? After the Carnival of Brazil, well... We're home and we're back on the circuit. We're in Alpstadt in Germany for the ninth time. I'm Rob Warner, this is Bart French. And Bart After illness decimated the female field out in Brazil, well, all of the girls are back and fighting fit. Yolanda Neff, Evie Richards and, of course, Pauline ferran Prevo. Not only that, but Jenny Risfeds returns as well. This year, the season is going to be absolutely wild. in the lead, Rebecca McConnell behind her, Anna Terpstra, Yolanda Neff, and then we have Luana Lecorto, already on the fifth place. There is Mona Mitterwalma, the Austrian champ. 30 seconds back. Wow, look at this gap on lap one. Rebecca McConnell out front, commanding it so far. What a way for Keller today. Yeah, look at her. So powerful, this woman. And there is Vizvedz right on the wheel now. Jason Group, Luana Lecomte, Pauline Ferrand Prevot, Alessandra Keller, Mona Mirwana in sixth place. But Rizvedz staying with Rebecca McConnell. Mona Mirwana now leading this Jason Group. And Mona with a little gap now to Luana Lecomte. Rizvedz to the front now. Probably Jenny feels as well that she might be a bit faster than Rebecca. I wanted to go a little bit faster because I thought it was time. An opportunity for Rebecca as well to save some energy. Well, I actually wanted her to do a bit more work in the front and um, you know, it just helps to like lift the speed and know that you're going at the right speed. Um, sometimes I think you, it's a fine balance between going too hard and not going hard enough. But yeah, I was actually quite happy for her to set the speed for a while and it also could give me a gauge to how she was going. And McConnell now. Put a bit of a gap in at Rizved, so McConnell is trying to go now, but I'm going to say... Yeah, I was pretty cooked when she attacked, but... Wow, McConnell, on the form of her life, so many years, fighting 68 World Cup races before she won one in Brazil at her 69th attempt. Grin her teeth, a smile creeping across it, now you've done it again. What a performance that was, what a win, the margin absolutely huge. McConnell on top of the world. Jenny Rizved's well, a strong, strong ride for her. Her first World Cup race of the year. And look at this, what it means to the young Austrian. Mona Mittenwalna comes in to take third place. Great ride for Luana, fourth place for her today. Keller takes the last spot of the podium. Oh my God, I think it's just like, it's just incredible. I mean, like this time I had a little bit of time to think about what was going on, which was, and I was just like, focus on what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's no words for this. And um, you know, just every, like today, the plan was literally just enjoy every moment for today. So Rebecca McConnell proving that her maiden World Cup victory wasn't a fluke. She becomes the fifth woman in history to have a perfect weekend. And up until this point, we've only seen Aussies and Kiwis winning World Cup races, which I'm not sure has happened before. But things are likely to change in this men's race. And there is one man looking to make a little bit of history. He equaled Julian Absalom's 33 World Cup win, Olympic distance record, only last time out in Brazil. And today, Nino Scherzer has an opportunity to beat it. 
conditions about perfect out there. This we expect to be a huge race here today. Especially also with this man, Thomas Pitcock. The Olympic champion. Hasn't been at a mountain bike race since Tokyo last summer. But he's incredibly special. Here we go, we're off then. Round two is underway. 123 riders thundering down this tarmac. Look at the crowds in place here, Bart. Brilliant to see the Bull and Tyler full again. <laughs> Wild how fast they're going in these early stages. Fighting for their positions all the time. The pace is insane. Pitcock is coming. Here he comes now. I, I feel good on my bike, but I haven't got the speed like Nino. I mean, yeah, the way he goes down hills, it's, uh, it's impressive. Oh, man. Doubling down out of the woods there, incredible. These four are coming together again. It looks like a technical problem for Vlad Dusklip. Ah, broken cell, broken cell. Hanging off there. He must have broke the rails on the seat post. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they have to change the seat post. Look here, from Scherter, from Pidcock, from Alan Hathaway. Daskalou has been into the pits, he's had that seat post change, here he is underway again. Looks like Pidcock is pushing hard. And he's really up in the pace here. Pidcock, is he turning a screw on everyone? Bring it. Wow, 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 this is an attack. He's opened up a gap as well to the world's best man in bike riders. This is all out from Thomas Pidcock. He's 22 years old. Still got his entire career ahead of him, really. Already achieved so much. Three to go then for Thomas Pitcock here. 37 seconds now. That gap just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Garod taking the high road. The others taking the low. The pace of him, he's going to catch up the lead motorbike if they're not careful. <laughs> Looks like Matthias, real flat. Yes! Real flat for Matthias. Yes, yep. That's why the foot went down. Oh, yep, what a shame yep. then. Oh, it's going to be a long way to that tech feed zone for him. Vlad Daskulu, fifth place. Just over a minute back. That's incredible. So Karad now leading them onto this climb at the back. Daskulu's there. Look at this. He's almost there. A yeah, half five for that second place. Tito Akarov, Nino Schulte, Vlad Daskali and Alan Hedderley. Battling hard in that last lap. 28 years old now, Tituan Karad. Riding so well today, but great to see him riding this well. So Nino attacking, Daskalu trying to go with him, as does Karad. Daskalu looking like he is. Schurter's sure, got a few bike lengths as we pick up Pidcock coming the other way. The Olympic champion coming up to the line. He wins this one with ease on the back wheel then. Thomas Pidcock takes his second ever Mountain Bike World Cup Cross Country Olympic win. It's going to be Nino Schurter. It's going to take second place. Vlad Daskalou comes across the line in third. Great ride for Tituan Carrad as well. Last spot on the podium for the big Spanish rider. David Valero. After the wheelie across the line, I saw you exhale. Was that perhaps a sense of relief given how much pressure and expectation comes with you into these events? Maybe it's just that I managed to do a wheelie because I uh, haven't really <laughs> haven't done any wheelies recently. Um, I haven't ridden my mountain bike so much this uh, year yet, so yeah, it's a different, different sort of sort of effort. And you know, up those climbs, being able to do the repeatedly, go really deep and recover, that was uh, hard. What an incredible race that was from Great Britain's Tom Pidcock. Given he's barely been near a mountain bike since the Olympics, he really put on a show here in Albstadt. But maybe the bigger race was very much for second place. Nino Schurter, Tito and Carol, and Vlad Daskalou battling it out on those big Albstadt inclines. And the good news is all of the guys up there today who are out there on the track are going to be back with us again in Novi Meso Namorave, and that is only one week to wait. So, you guys, you make sure that you come and join us. Should I know my life?